Don't just play SNES classics on your mister, feel them. Get yourself a Damon Byte adapter, cheap, easy, and responsive. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick and today we're going to be building a Damon Byte adapter for Mr. FPGA so you can use your favorite OEM SNES controller for that old school nostalgic feel. Damon Byte adapters are great because you can build them for a reasonable price and they work great with Mr. with super low latency around a millisecond. You do need some soldering skills to be able to assemble these, but if you follow this guide, you'll be up and running in no time. I'll also be releasing guides for NES, N64, Genesis, and Saturn adapters soon. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when those videos go live. I've also designed and 3D printed my own adapter case for this project. Like the video if you're interested in using this for one of your adapters. All right, here's an overview of the parts and the tools that could be used for this build. Let's take a closer look at each one. This is a female SNES port. It's got seven pins on there, but we're actually only gonna use five. You can find these on websites like AliExpress. Since we 3D printed our own custom case for this adapter, we're gonna use some 12 millimeter M3 hex screws to assemble it all. I like to use some heat shrink tubing on all the solder connections that I make to the controller port. You're going to need to use an Arduino Pro Micro for this. There's a mini USB version, but I usually prefer to get the USB-C one. Here's a quick look at the 3D printed adapter enclosure that I designed. I tried to keep it as minimal as possible. I used an M1.4 5mm machine screw to fasten the Arduino into the 3D printed case. For those of you without access to a 3D printer, you can still build this adapter. I just recommend that you either use electrical tape or Kapton tape to wrap the Arduino board when you're done. That way you protect all the components on the board. I used some 22 gauge silicone wire for this project. I cut five lengths of about 40 millimeters. I used black, red, yellow, white, and green for the ground, VCC, clock, latch, and data lines respectively. You can use whatever color scheme works for you, but this is what was easiest for me. After I cut all five wires, I stripped about an eighth of an inch or two to three millimeters off each end of each wire. After I stripped all five wires, I lightly tinned both ends of all five wires. This actually makes soldering to the controller port pins and to the Arduino easier later on. The process is pretty repetitive here, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up a little bit until the next step. Now that all the tinning is complete, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the Arduino itself. Before you wire anything to the Arduino, make sure that you create a solder bridge on jumper J1. I started with filling the via for the ground connection. Then I heated the reverse side of the via with my soldering iron and pushed my ground wire in from the top side until the insulation touched the PCB. Next, I repeated the same process for the VCC connection. Here I connected the data line to the A1 via instead of the A0 via. Normally I'd recommend connecting the data wire to A0, but since this is a single player adapter, it actually doesn't make a difference in this case and mine will still work just fine. Here we're gonna wire up the latch signal to via number two. And finally, we're going to wire up the clock signal to via number three. We're going to prep the controller port by adding solder to each of the five pins that will wire to the Arduino. You can see a diagram on screen showing which pins carry which signal to the Arduino. Next, we're going to cut some short lengths of heat shrink tubing. We're going to slide these over the wires that connect to the controller port. Since all the wires have already been soldered to the Arduino, make sure that you put the heat shrink tubing on now, otherwise it's going to be too late once you solder the wires to the controller port. Now that all the pins are prepped with solder, solder each of the five wires to the controller port according to the on-screen diagram. Remember, two of the pins aren't used, so pay close attention to which pins you solder the wires to. Slide the heat shrink tubing over the controller pins and bust out that heat gun. It's about to get hot up in here. 
carefully apply heat to the tubing until it's completely shrunk. Be careful not to overheat the pins though because they can get loose in the plastic if you do it too much. Insert the USB-C port into the cutout of the adapter case and fully seat the board in the enclosure. Fasten the M1.4 screws through via 9 or 10 of the Arduino board. Pop the controller port into place and then set the top of the enclosure into place. Use the four M3 screws to tighten both halves of the case together. Our custom adapter is finally completely finished. The only thing left now is to program the Arduino on the PC and then we're finally able to use it with the mister. Plug in the adapter to your PC and go to the MacGyver Daemon Byte GitHub page to download the zip file that we'll be using to program the Arduino. Link for the GitHub site will be in the description below. Locate the zip file on your PC and extract the contents somewhere easy to find. I used a folder on my desktop. Open the extracted folder and navigate to the SNES Controllers USB folder. Double click on the SNES Controllers USB INO file to open the Arduino IDE application. If you don't have this application already, I'll leave a link in the description to download it. Make sure that you install it before proceeding any further with this tutorial. Open the Tools menu and navigate to the Boards option, and then choose the Arduino AVR Boards submenu. Then, select Arduino Leonardo from the list. Next, open the Tools menu again and go to the Ports menu, and make sure you select the port that is identified by Arduino Micro. Now we're ready to flash the Arduino. Click the Upload button at the top left of the application window and let it do its thing. Once the upload is complete, we'll test the controller to make sure everything is working as expected. In Windows, open the run command and execute the command joy.cpl. If everything worked properly, you should see the Arduino Leonardo listed. Select the Arduino Leonardo controller associated with your Daemon Byte adapter and choose the properties option. You may have to try both depending on if you wired the data line to A0 or to A1. If we've done everything successfully, you should be able to move the D-pad and press all the buttons on the controller and see corresponding feedback in the Windows controller properties. As long as this works, you can plug the controller adapter into your mister and use your OEM controller with no worries whatsoever. Okay, now that the adapter is built and functioning, let's go over the pros and the cons. First. The pros. Number one, components are reasonably priced. Number two, low latency. It's not as fast as snack, but it's really low. Number three, you can flash the Arduino for use with one or two controllers. Number four, you can connect to standard Mr. USB ports. You're not relegated to the user port like you are with snack. Number five, this is a big one for some people, you can navigate the Mr. Menus. You cannot do this with Snack, but you can with Daemon Byte adapters. Number six, as an added bonus, you could use this adapter on a PC if you wanted to. And now for the cons. Number one, this is a DIY project and it does require assembly and some knowledge of soldering. Number two, you do have to source your own parts and availability could be tricky depending on which websites you check. Number three, it's not zero latency, this is not snack. If you need zero latency, it's not for you, but honestly, it's so low, it's not even an issue for casual players or even for many speedrunners. That's the SNES Daemon Byte adapter for Mr. FPGA. Use your OEM controller for that nostalgic retro feel, but on modern hardware. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be adding new videos soon for NES, N64, Genesis, and Saturn adapters. Keep an eye out for those and get subscribed. Would you like to build a Daemon Byte adapter for your mister or just use a USB controller or maybe just go wireless? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious what your preference is. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and don't forget to share it. It helps me out so much, you guys. I stream lots of retro content on YouTube and on Twitch, so maybe stop by and say hi sometime. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.